Hi guys, we're here for a Bible in a Year Challenge reading for November 6th. That reading today is going to come from Ezekiel 4 through 6, Psalm 122 through 123, and Luke 2. Okay, Ezekiel chapter 4. A sign of the coming siege. And now, son of man, take a large brick and set it down in front of you. Then draw a map of the city of Jerusalem on it. Build siege ramps against their city walls. Surround it with enemy camps and battering rams. Then take an iron griddle and place it between you and the city. Turn toward it and demonstrate how the enemy will attack Jerusalem. This will be a warning to the people of Israel. Now lie on your left side and place the sins of Israel on yourself. You are to bear their sins for the number of days you lie there on your side. You will bear Israel's sins for 390 days, one day for each year of their sin. After that, turn over and lie on your right side for 40 days, one day for each year of Judah's, of Judah's sin. Meanwhile, continue your demonstration on, of the siege of Jerusalem. Lie there with your arm bar, bared in prophecy for dest- with your arm bared in prophecy for destruction. I will tie you up with ropes so you won't be able to turn from side to side until the days of your siege have been completed. Now go and get some wheat, barley, beans, lentils, millet, and spelt and mix them together in a storage jar. Use this food to make bread for yourself during the 390 days you'll be lying on your side. Ration this out to yourself, eight ounces of food for each day, and eat it at set times. Then measure out a jar of water for each day and drink it at set times. Each day, prepare your bread as you would barley cakes. While all the people are watching, bake it over a fire using dried human dung as fuel, and then eat the bread. For this is what the Lord says, Israel will eat defiled bread in the Gentile lands where I will banish them. Then I said, O sovereign Lord, must I be defiled by human dung? For I have never been defiled before. From the time I was a child until now, I have never eaten any animal that died of sickness or that I found dead. And I have never eaten any of the animals that are law forbids. All right, the Lord said, you may bake your bread with cow dung instead of human dung. Then he told me, son of man, I will cause food to be very scarce in Jerusalem. It will be weighed out with great care and eaten fearfully. The water will be portioned out drop by drop, and the people will drink it with dismay. Food and water will be so scarce that the people will look at one another in terror, and they will waste away under their punishment. Chapter 5, A Sign of the Coming Judgment. Son of man, take a sharp sword and use it as a razor to shave your head and beard. Use a scale to weigh the hair in three equal parts. Place a third of it at the center of your map of Jerusalem. After acting out the siege, burn it there. Scatter another third across your map and slash it with a sword. Scatter the last third to the wind, for I will scatter my people with the sword. Just keep a bit of the hair and tie it up in your robe. Then take a few of these hairs out and throw them into the fire, burning them up. A fire will then spread from this remnant and destroy all of Israel. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. This is an illustration of what will happen to Jerusalem. I placed her at the center of the nations, but she has rebelled against my regulations and has been even more wicked than the surrounding nations. She has refused to obey the laws I gave her to follow. So this is what the Sovereign Lord says. Since you refuse to obey my laws and regulations and have behaved even worse than your neighbors... I myself, the Sovereign Lord, am now your enemy. I will punish you publicly while all the nations watch. Because of your detestable idols, I will punish you more severely than I have punished anyone before or ever will again. Parents will eat their own children, and children will eat their parents. And I will punish you by scattering the few who survive to the far reaches of the earth. As surely as I live, says the Lord, the Sovereign Lord, I will cut you off completely. I will show you no pity at all because you have defiled my temple with idols and vile practices. A third of your people will die in the city from famine and disease. A third of them will be slaughtered by the enemy outside the city walls. And I will scatter a third to the winds and chase them with my sword. Then at last my anger will be spent and I will be satisfied. And when my fury against them has subsided, all Israel will know that I, the Lord, have spoken to them in my jealous anger. So I will turn you into a ruin, a mockery in the eyes of the surrounding nations and to everyone who travels by. You will become an object of mockery and taunting and horror. You will be a warning to all the nations around you. They will see what happens when the Lord turns against a nation in furious rebuke. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will shower you with the deadly arrows of famine to destroy you. The famine will become more and more severe until every crumb of food is gone. And along with the famine, wild animals will attack you. Robbing you of your children. Disease and war will stalk your land and I will bring the sword of the enemy against you. I, the Lord, have spoken. 
Chapter 6, Judgment Against Israel's Mountains. Again, a message came to me from the Lord. Son of man, look over toward the mountains of Israel and prophesy, prophesy against them. Give the mountains of Israel this message from the Sovereign Lord. This is what the Sovereign Lord says to the mountains and hills, to the ravines and valleys. I am about to bring war upon you, and I will destroy your pagan shrines. All your altars will be demolished, and your incense altars will be smashed. I will kill your people in front of your idols. I will lay your corpses in front of your idols and scatter your bones around your altars. Wherever you live, there will be desolation. I will destroy your pagan shrines, your altars, your idols, your incense altars, and all the other religious objects you have made. Then when the place is littered with corpses, you will know what I am. You will know that I am the Lord. But I will let a few of my people escape destruction, and they will be scattered among the nations of the world. Then when they are, are exiled among the nations, they will remember me. They will recognize how grieved I am by their unfaithful hearts and lustful eyes that long for other gods. Then at last they will hate themselves for all their wickedness. They will know that I alone am the Lord, and that I was serious when I predicted that all this would happen to them. This is what the Sovereign Lord says. Clap your hands in horror and stamp your feet. Cry out, alas, because all the evil that the people of Israel have done. Now they are going to die from war and famine and disease. Disease will strike down those who are far away in exile. War will destroy those who are nearby. And anyone who survives will be killed by famine. So at last I will spend my fury on them. When their dead lie scattered among their idols and altars, on every hill and mountain and under every green tree and great oak where they offered incense to other gods, to their gods, then they will know that I alone am the Lord. I will crush them and make their cities desolate from the wilderness in the south to Ribla in the north. Then they will know that I am the Lord. Okay, this is Psalm 122 through 123. Psalm 122, a song for the ascent to, Jer to Jerusalem, a Psalm of David. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And now we are standing here inside your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is a well-built city, knit together as a single unit. All the people of Israel, the Lord's people, make their pilgrimage here. They come to give thanks to the name of the Lord, as the law requires. Here stand the thrones where judgment is given, the thrones of the dynasty of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May all who love this city prosper. O Jerusalem, may there be peace within your walls and prosperity in your palaces. For the sake of my family and friends, I will say, peace be with you. For the sake of the house of the Lord, our God, I will seek what is best for you, O Jerusalem. And chapter 123, a song for the ascent to Jerusalem. I lift my eyes to you, O God, enthroned in heaven. We look to the Lord our God for his mercy, just as servants keep their eyes on their master, as a slave girl watches her mistress for the slightest signal. Have mercy on us, Lord, have mercy, for we have had our fill of contempt. We have had our fill of the scoffing of the proud and the contempt of the arrogant. And Luke chapter 2. The birth of Jesus. At that time, the Roman Emperor Augustus decreed that a census should be taken throughout the Roman Empire. This was the first census taken when Quirinius was governor of Assyria. All returned to their own towns to register for this, for this census. And because Joseph was the descendant of King David, he had to go to Bethlehem in Judea, David's ancient home. He traveled there from the village of Nazareth in Galilee. He took with him Mary, his fiance, who was obviously pregnant by this time. And while they were there, the time came for her baby to be born. She gave birth to him, to her first son, to her first child, a son. She wrapped him snugly in strips of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the village inn. The shepherds and angels. That night, some shepherds were in the fields outside the village, guarding their flocks of sheep. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared among them, and the radiance of the Lord's glory surrounded them. They were terribly frightened. But the angel reassured them, Don't be afraid, he said. I bring you good news of great joy for everyone. The Savior, yes, the Messiah, the Lord, has been born tonight in Bethlehem, the city of David. And this is how you will recognize him. You will find a baby lying in a manger, wrapped snugly in strips of cloth. Suddenly, the angel was joined by a vast host of others, the armies of heaven praising God. Glory to God in the highest heaven, and peace on earth to all whom God favors. When the angels had returned to heaven, the shepherds said to each other, Come on, let's go to Bethlehem. Let's see this wonderful thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. They ran to the village and found Mary and Joseph, and there was the baby lying in the manger. Then the shepherds told everyone what had happened and what the angel had said to them about this child. All who heard the shepherd's story were astonished, but Mary quietly treasured these things in her heart and thought about them often. 
The shepherds went back to their fields and flocks, glorifying and praising God for what the angels had told them, and because they had just seen the child, just as the angel had said. Jesus is presented in the temple. Eight days later, when the baby was circumcised, he was named Jesus, the name given him by the angel even before he was conceived. Then it was time for the purification offering as required by the law of Moses after the birth of a child. So his parents took him to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord. The law of the Lord says, if a woman's first child is a boy, he must be dedicated to the Lord. So they offered a sacrifice according to what was required in the law of the Lord, either a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons. The prophecy of Simeon. Now there was a man named Simeon who lived in Jerusalem. He was a righteous man and very devout. He was filled with the Holy Spirit and he eagerly expected the Messiah to come and rescue Israel. The Holy Spirit had revealed to him that he would not die until he had seen the Lord's Messiah. That day, the Spirit led him to the temple. So when Mary and Joseph came to present the baby Jesus to the Lord, as the law required, Simeon was there. He took the child in his arms and praised God, saying, Lord, now I can die in peace as you promised me. I have seen the Savior you have given to all people. He is a light to reveal God to the nations, and he is the glory of your people Israel. Joseph and Mary were amazed at what was being said about Jesus. Then Simeon blessed them, and he said to Mary, This child will be rejected by many in Israel, and it will be their undoing. But he will be the greatest joy to many others. Thus the deepest thoughts of many hearts will be revealed, and a sword will pierce your very soul. The prophecy of Anna. Anna, a prophet, was also there in the temple. She was the daughter of Phanuel of the tribe of Asher and was very old. She was a widow, for her husband had died when they had been married only seven years. She was now 84 years old. She never left the temple, but stayed there day and night, worshiping God with fasting and prayer. She came along just as Simeon was talking with Mary and Joseph, and she began praising God. She talked about Jesus to everyone who had been waiting for the promised king to come and deliver Jerusalem. When Jesus' parents had fulfilled all the requirements of the law of the Lord, they returned home to Nazareth in Galilee. There the child grew up healthy and strong. He was filled with wisdom beyond his years, and God placed his special favor upon him. Jesus speaks with the teachers. Every year, Jesus' parents went to Jerusalem for the Passover festival. When Jesus was 12 years old, they attended the festival as usual. After the celebration was over, they started home to Nazareth, but Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. His parents didn't miss him at first because they assumed he was with his friends among the other travelers. When he didn't show up that evening, they started to look for him among their relatives and friends. When they couldn't find him, they went back to Jerusalem to search for him there. Three days later, they finally discovered him. He was in the temple, sitting among the religious teachers, discussing deep questions with them, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. His parents didn't know what to think. Son, his mother said to him, why have you done this to us? Your father and I have been frantic, searching for you everywhere. But why did you need to search? He asked. You should have known that I would be in my father's house. But they didn't understand what he meant. Then he returned to Nazareth with them and was obedient to them, and his mother stored all these things in her heart. So Jesus grew both in height and in wisdom, and he was loved by God and by all who knew him. That is all for today's reading. We'll see you tomorrow.